yeah, so they're completely blown away by that. Uh, never judge, judge a book by its cover. This is a fun one. Dealing with the... I, I call this deal with the devil, uh, which is very ironic considering who um, does this. <clears throat> you know, because of the huge wall of power that is the sand, Goku has to learn a technique that literally uh, artificially boosts his power, but kind of sacrificing his own body in a way. Yeah, it's ironic because... Um, go, uh, effectively... Uh, God, Super God teaches him that move, so very funny. All right, so I haven't saved. I mean, I did save, but just be absolutely paranoid. Oh God, there's also a bunch of other stuff. The enemy of my enemy, which is something that applies to Goku and uh, Piccolo, since they're still uh, enemies now, effectively more so like bitter rivals. That, but they have to team up with each other in order to take care of the Sands, which is a bigger threat to either of them than each other, which is really cool. <coughs> Excuse me. God, yeah, sorry, I'm still kind of... I haven't been awake for long. I'm on, like, maybe less than seven hours of sleep right now. That's the thing about having speech impediments. The less sleep you have, the more obvious they are. So, I probably sound horrible right now, but fuck it. Anyway, this is funny. Krillin out here reciting how he's going to break the news to Chi-Chi, and then Chi-Chi comes out anyway and completely flubs it. That's great. Also, it's very unfortunate that the, the, the fucking dichotomy of Chi-Chi, even in this game alone, where we have her as a loving and supporting, not even wife, like fiance, back in the 23rd World Tournament, despite having a fiery edge about her, like, is still warm with Goku, and it's really cute. But then we get to this, and, like, constantly angry with Goku, which fine, he's out late with Gohan, but then later on when they're back, like she, so, she solely hyper fixates on Gohan and completely ignores Goku, who's actually on death's door again. <coughs> God damn this woman, Jesus Christ. Horrible, horrible stuff. I, I'm uh, kind of looking forward to getting the positive reinforcement from Taylor for Chi being a terrible character now. Again, I know we're talking about this. This is this played up way more for Hyux in the anime because this isn't really present in the manga. It makes me think I should read the manga for Dragon Ball as well. But nah, dude, just Jesus Christ. Anyway, what else I have in my notes? Oh yeah, duality. This is a very funny thing because of the way Goku and Gohan are like they're initially portrayed as complete opposites. But like in many respects, they're actually completely the same. It's very weird. Like, think about it. The, our introduction to Goku. Like, he's self-reliant, he's confident in practicing his martial arts, uh, and completely alone. Gohan is sheltered, peaceful, uh, completely shits himself at the slightest inconvenience, pretty much. It's actually kind of wacky. In fact, actually, I think we had a little, we had a little bit of, uh, dialogue at the start of the game with Goku remarking that, yeah, Gohan's got a lot of potential, but Chi-Chi is, is basically just squandering it. Now, again... I advocate for a good work-life balance. I think Gohan could easily be a scholar and stay up with everything, but, like, dedicate a few hours per day just exercising. Just fucking exercising. Come on. Jesus. Like, that's a work healthy work-life balance right there. But, uh, no, I guess not. Is there anything else? Uh, let's see. I got that one. Deal with the devil. Duality. Enemy of my enemy. Oh, yeah. Um... I, I um had a funny one. That, uh, I called "fuck around and find out." Let me let me just read why I have written down. Okay, so sort of like Piccolo Jr. was fighting Krillin in the 23rd World Tournament. You know what I'm talking about. The Sands repeatedly underestimate their opponents because they perceive themselves as just naturally stronger, leading to instances of Goku sacrificing himself to take out Raditz, or Gohan getting a drop on Nappa while they wait for Goku. They have a bad habit of underestimating their opponents repeatedly, and it's very funny. It actually does feed back into the scatter thing from earlier because, again, the Z fires can raise and lower their power level at will. The Sands don't know how to do that, so they see something. They're like, "Ah, that's how strong you are." Piccolo raised his power level to what 1,200 when charging special beam cannon, and that made Rad shit bricks, which is crazy. Not that he shit bricks, but the fact that uh, special beam cannon took his power that high up—it's actually nuts. Also, funny thing, 
about seeing how Vegeta could piece that together, how Goku had power level 5,000, he's like, shit, if it, they can raise the power levels too by like that amount, then he's gonna be a huge problem. Especially if they're all getting up, goddamn. Yeah, uh, Vegeta might have my vote for the second most fearsome uh, villain in the whole franchise. Behind Frieza, obviously, but Vegeta's like calculating demeanor and his way he can operate under pressure is really cool and also really terrifying too. He's effective like a military general in and of himself. It's awesome. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, chalk one up for the Vegeta fan club, I guess. Cool. That clearly I'm the head of. All right, let's see. Anyway, uh, things. What do I need? Um, sleep's not common, but I'll stock up for it anyway. I guess the rest is going to go into Phoenix Feathers. Yeah, it works. Wait, did we get anything worth, worth selling? Yes, we did. So, kind of like... Oh God, my voice is cracked so hard, so hard just now. So, kind of like Pokemon, where you get like nuggets, and you can sell them for like, what, 7,500... Uh... Zenny? Pokebucks, that was it. Uh, a pop? This game, you can also do that. You, you got um, a bunch of rare items you can collect that you can sell for fucking huge amounts of money. Money is... Ugh, God, my voice is cracking hard right now. I need to get myself another soda. Money is pretty scarce at the start of the game, but once you really get going, you are you are in it to win it. It's really cool. Uh, What do we need, though? I don't... Okay, I'm not running away from out too often, so I don't have to use smoke bombs at all. Um... Freezing is only really cut. Actually, we might be in, a, in an area that requires that, so fair enough. Do that. And the rest on Phoenix Feathers in case we're in some huge bosses, which we are going to. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, we're going back to West City. Okay, okay, got it. Cool. Sorry, I, I, I wasn't reading that text just now. Okay. So, West City. Um. Don't have to worry about this place being bombed, so that's cool. Wait, 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 hang on. Was there anything weird out here? You're from a six or what? Okay, that's rough. Uh-huh. Hello, not trunks. Oh, wait, no, we have been here before. Hey, when people park their cars here, I think I'll draw some griffin on it. I endorse this. I actually do fully endorse this. Fucking humiliate these bastards for parking in illegal spots. Goddamn. And not like inconvenient spots that are like, ah, he took up like a uh, parking space or two. Nah, fuck that. Are they still here? Yes, they are. Okay, where is Bulma's mom? There she, yeah, okay, no, it was her. She just wasn't saying it before. I'm Bulma's mother. Again, I gotta say, green long hair, uh, decent chest size. Yeah, I would. I, I think I would, despite being low res as fuck. Okay, also one thing. Some of these animals uh, erroneously give you hints about the game. Some skills cannot be learned right off the bat. Try experiment a little. Yeah, right? I wonder if... Uh, okay, I genuinely wonder if, like... I'm sleeping quit bothering me. I wonder if, like, this is all, like... <laughs> original to the script, uh, English script or not, because... I don't know, it'd be very funny to look, look into that. Also this. Alright. Uh, wait. Shit. No. We need to talk to the doctor briefs. Right. Hang on. Selective use of fast forwarding. Try charging her workstation over there. I think it's this one. Yeah. Yep. There we go. And also this guy. The goober over here. I, I see the interns are getting their asses kicked. That's a very funny thing about it. Alright. Uh, luckily, you don't have to go all the way back. You just go out the left side here. Yay. <laughs> Yay, future proofing. All right. Back to Tommy House. Is there anything else I had? Oh, yeah. There's the obvious uh, class four warfare that also goes on between uh, Goku and Vegeta, also, which is very cool because, you know, uh, <clears throat> Vegeta is an elite because of his birth purely alone. And Goku's a lower class because he was born with a low power level. That's really cool. Um, again. Get your politics out of my anime. It's literally been here the entire time, you fucking goober. Okay. Spent all night working on the scatter, and now it's working before she machine guns them all to make sure they wake up. Ah, the typical American greeting. Good stuff. 
or not get illustrated, but she, she did shoot them with a fucking, not like an assault rifle. That, maybe not like an SMG or, or something. I'm not entirely sure. You, you can't blame them for sleeping, Bulma. You've been working all night practically. But anyway, hey, we got a working scouter, which is going to be nice for gameplay, but not hugely required. I'll say that. Yeah, another random made up language that Toriyama had. So yeah, the fact that Roshi is still saying a 139, his age is not that bad. Although God knows how much it chewed up if he, you know, bulked up his muscles. Probably quite a bit. Our boy here is at 206. Not too far behind Piccolo currently. That's really cool. And just a reminder how much how much damage Krillin did at the World Tournament as well. Like, he didn't beat Piccolo, but he's certainly put him through his paces, that's for damn sure. Again, Krillin, low-key MVP, hell yeah. And now one very funny detail that's not really brought up, but they do bring up here, actually. So, the scouter can actually detect where Piccolo and Gohan are. So, if they ever want to stage a rescue operation, they easily could. Save for the fact that Piccolo would hear them and be there immediately, but you know, details. Anyway, got Tian, uh, and we got 177. That's Yamcha, presumably. I would have thought Yamcha would have been weaker by, than Krillin by now, but nah, he's, he's keeping pace. I guess also, speaking of that, all of this shit is taken out of 329. Wait, 329. Is that Piccolo? Dude, fucking Piccolo sorry, got seven uh, points on his power level. That's kind of funny. It doesn't mean much. It's just kind of funny. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. I should uh, bring up the detail that is very funny because it's uh, fucking stupid. So I mentioned this before. Uh, I mentioned this a little, a little bit ago that um, ironically the fans uh, fall into seven points in a day. That's not nothing, dude. That's pretty decent. Or more like two days, but you know, that's still pretty good. Anyway, um, oh, what was I gonna say? Uh, the, the fans have actually fallen into the trap that Toriyama was actually trying to uh, undermine. So the fans are solely, like almost solely fixated, especially power scalers, holy shit. The idea that um, literally surface level is all you need to know about details for strength, like at any given time so there's all these arbitrary numbers thrown around for like what isn't z broly super legendary super stand like a bill over a billion power level or something and i'm just like wasn't the whole lesson that the saiyans kept underestimating their opponents because of power levels to begin with so they were useless ultimately like wasn't that the whole purpose come on guys and again once you start getting to like a million with freeze a second form like that kind of undermines the whole thing Jesus Christ. Am I off base? I don't think I am. Like, it's very ironic how they became the thing that Toriyama was criticizing. Like, don't judge a book by its cover. Literally. And of course, this isn't all the fans. Some of them actually, like, a lot of them do take it to heart, but still. 329 is too much for me. Maybe suicide. Especially with um, Piccolo's cutting. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. Right, we were also talking about this in the Discord yesterday. There's a discussion going on with whether or not Master Roshi could fight off the Sands. I think Alex mentioned it. And it's funny because there is an argument to be had because of the way Master Roshi was fighting uh, fucking Jiren in the manga. Not everyone's going to know about this, but it's cool because I hold, I hold the belief that, thinking about it, because of how much Nappa is so focused on strength alone and how much he underestimates his opponents that are especially humans and how not the sharpest tool in the shed he is like I do think Master Roshi could beat Nappa given the right circumstances I do think that could happen Raditz I don't think so unless Master Roshi had the drop on him and uh, Raditz didn't get a whiff of how strong he could actually be Vegeta, there's absolutely no way. Like, <laughs> Al Alumajiro. How do you even get that? It's Yajirobe. <coughs> I cannot talk right now. 
who builds a house on a place like this? Well, the old fucking side for one, but also it's remote enough that we don't have to deal with you. So, you know, pretty good. I joke. Yadrobi is... Literally, Yadrobi is the MVP of this entire arc. Krillin is also really good, but... Yamcha... Or, Yamcha. Yadrobi literally fucking gets two hits on, on Vegeta, both of which are very consequential. So, yeah. Well, the first one more so, but yeah. He was there the whole time. <laughs> Vegeta never noticed him. It's so good. Kami says good train it. Funny because Kai, uh, he just says corn's good train you, not Kami. Now, what's significant about this is that currently Krillin cannot sense power levels. Neither can Tien or Yamcha. Maybe Chaozu, but that's tenuous. Maybe Tien could. I don't know. But this is important because those two cannot sense power levels yet at all without a scatter. That's why they were Krillin was completely um, was confused when Raz was flying towards them. Because Goku could sense him from the, the training with Kami. And so, yeah, the training with Kami is actually what, since that's what propelled the, the uh, bleh. Goku to be able to fight, um, Piccolo Jr. Sorry, I'm just, just having a hard time forming words right now. Goddamn. Not having a stroke. I don't think so. That same training is what's going to allow the Z-Fires to keep up with the Cyberman at the very least. And be able to take the fight to Nappa. Not beat him. Noticeably, for Chaozu, but it is a good start. And Tien's gonna get his arm blown off, but you know details. <coughs> Don't bring Goku back to life until the aliens get here. Initially, a good reaction, but uh, turns out he kept his uh, body in the other world. Yeah. And then this funny bit. Huh, is Yara coming back? That's kind of weird. You'd think Master Roshi would at least have an idea that Goku, not even Death, can stop him. Well, it helps that, um, uh, I think, yeah. Talking's hard. It does help that Kami, well, he would have kept his body regardless, but Kami's want to put the good word in for him training on the other side as well. I'm just very glad that Kami uh, heard the entire conversation, and that's what a lot of things to go through. Because without Kaioken, woo, oh boy, that would suck. Also, we're not going to cover too much here. Well, well, a little bit, but maybe I'll just get this out of the way right now. I mentioned at the, at the top of the recording that Kai is very funny because it cuts out so much. Episode 6 to 7, I think it was, or it's 5 to 6. Maybe it's 5 to 6. I thought we missed an episode because we completely cut out the six months of training that Gohan did, which was a lot of it's filler, don't get me wrong. But for Goku to start running on Snake Way, one million miles, and in the next episode, he's already there. It's so fucking funny. What about Goku? Uh, dead. Yeah, I don't think there was any way you're going to spin this in a way that Chi-Chi would have been relatively okay with this. Oof, that's unfortunate. Um, hey, hey, not Goku's fault. It's fucking Riot's fault, if nothing else. Who cares about Goku? I'm worried about my Gohan. I hate her so much. Bigelow could be doing something horrible to him this very minute. <laughs> oh, great. More. Is this sexism? This is kind of starting to feel like sexism a little bit. How could I become at a time like this? <sighs> well, he's not dead yet, so that's a good start. And you could, you know, remember what Piccolo said. Okay, I know you guys have a history with Piccolo. I understand that fully. But, like, even with the whole Raditz thing, he's already proven himself to be, you know, fairly trustworthy, kind of, when the situation calls for it. So I wouldn't think he'd squander the Earth's 
best chance to, you know, beat the Saiyans. Considering he himself knows he can't do it. Oh, this is cancerous. Oh my god. Holy shit, have I already gone out like 40 minutes into this and we haven't gotten real gameplay? Holy crap. Dude. Why do I feel like she ignored the whole her husband is alien reveal? Yeah, I feel like that didn't really matter to her. Like, <laughs> if we're being real here. Okay, I've been... Mm, this... Oh, God. And now I'm going to say something that might come across as sexist because of the way this is being perceived. Because it's so bad. Anyway, so luckily we do have the, the scatter to track down where the guys are. Yamcha got a promising career as a baseball player. That's so fucking cool. Taking the martial arts training you've honed for years and using it to do something else. That's so neat. I, I genuinely think Goku could have become like a martial arts instructor himself and actually made a killing doing it. I'm not joking about that. I think that actually would have been brilliant. I mean, fuck's sake. Even, even Mr. Satan... For as much of a con man as he is, and it still plays for Hyux, but he did help with Kid Buu, so it's fine. Like, at least he's still an instructor. Like, at least he uses his routes, his fame for like some good shit. Mo sometimes, at least he got he's got that. So he can bring Goku back to life and save my Gohan. Okay, now you give a fuck, Jesus Christ. It's actually brilliant becoming. Uh, become one of the strongest guys on earth and use that to legally become rich of it. Yeah, exactly. Jesus Christ. Or 18, 18 using her position to like uh, shake down Hercule for money. Uh, for literally hush money. It's so good. I love it. Anyway. TN should be over at Jingle Village. He, he sure picked the frigid spot for his training. Yeah, that sounds right. So unfortunately, there is no baseball player Yamcha to be had. Probably just goofing off over there too. Go who's gonna leave him in the dust. Fuck off. Uh, you can see everyone's priorities lie. Yay. Okay, so um, what do we got? Oh yeah, Krillin's completely de equipped. Go figure. Him, of course, defense three, recovery three. Uh we'll go with percentages later on, but for the time being, this is not a bad bump. 